at, at the end of the document, I just put a few extra things. Just We did already look at most of the diphthongs, but here they are again. Uh, I've got the seven, no, the eight main diphthongs in Greek. So the I diphthong. Diphthong means two vowels pronounced as one syllable. So di is two, thong is sound, so two sounds. So it's written as two sounds, but it's one syllable. So we already had psuchai, so it's a two-syllable word, psuchai, meaning souls. Another diphthong, epsilon, epsilon plus iota, is a. So this next word is in the, is the very, in the very uh, first line of the Iliad. It's a three-syllable word, aeda. Aeda. Notice that the first letter is alpha and it has a comma facing left, so no H. Aeda. So, yeah. so sing, sing to me, goddess. Yeah. The third diphthong, oi. We've had that a few times, and in fact, here's a word we had already oikos, meaning um, house. Uh, one I think we haven't had, alpha plus upsilon is ow. So here's our word, altos which I don't think is a core vocab word, but it means he or himself or the same person. It has several meanings in Greek, autos. And again, notice when a diphthong starts a word, the comma for the, the no H or H goes over the second of the two vowels. Okay, very important diphthong next. <clears throat> e plus u, eu. Kind of hard to say in English because we don't do it, but this fellow is fairly important, so we should pronounce his name right. So, uh, so you might say Zeus or Zdeus, as long as we remember it's Zeus. So he's got a one-syllable name. Again, um, his, his one syllable is made up of a diphthong, two vowels, which means the accent will go over the second of the two. Okay. Also, it ends with a, with a final sigma, oh. as we saw. Okay, a next diphthong. Omicron plus Upsilon, usually pronounced as O. Um, no, no, usually pronounced as O, actually. You would think it should be O, and maybe it was, but we traditionally pronounce it as O. And the, the two words I'm giving you there are, the first one is O, and the second one is Ook, which both mean not. So one of the ways of saying not in Greek. There's two of them, there's actually more than two, but uh, Greek hates one word ending with a vowel and the next word beginning with a vowel. So if you want to say not and the next word begins with a vowel, you would say ook, so that you can put a K between the two vowels. Again, uh, there's no H because the comma is facing left and the comma is over the second of the two because they're a diphthong treated as, as one syllable. Okay, one of my favorite words, this is not really from Homer, this is from Archimedes. Um, we've got an a and a u, a u, a u. And um, notice there's a comma facing right over the second one, so this must be an H. So, heureka, heureka. And if I tell you that in English we say eureka, you might think of Archimedes, who legend has it when he jumped in the bath and the water splashed everywhere and he just got this brilliant idea about about displacement and he said, I found it, Eureka. And the last one, Upsilon plus Iota, we, we. And this, uh, our, our keyword here has a comma facing right, so that means H, so Huios, one of the words for sun, S-O-N, sun, Huios. And very last of all, we've pretty much seen all of these, but here we go one more time. Um, breathing marks, remember if, the first vowel in a word has a comma facing left, it's no H, agathos. If the first vowel has a comma facing right, it is an H, heros, with an H. The third word has a diphthong with a comma facing left, so no H, so oikos. Um, fourth word, which we just had, has a diphthong with a comma facing right, so an H, huios. Then what do you do when you have capitals? And even though the ancient, ancient Greeks didn't only had capitals, we traditionally write them with lowercase, we save capitals for proper names. So here's uh, the name of a place you don't want to be. This is in one of the first few lines of the Iliad. And I'm going to pronounce this and then explain the two dots. 
but you notice it has a comma facing left, so no H. So this would be Aides. Aides. And the two dots over the second letter, the iota, mean not a diphthong. So it's not Aides, it's Aides. It's a three syllable word. So in Greek, uh, whenever you see two dots over a, a vowel, that means don't make a diphthong. Okay. And then uh, the next one, a fairly important goddess, and she has an H. And, and by the way, with capitals, the commas are to the left of the vowel, uh, not over it because there's no room for them. So she has an H before her name, Here, meaning Hera. And by the way, is that there's a, quite a few words in Homer where if you, if you learn Attic Greek, later Greek, she would have been Hera. But because of various rules of dialects in Homer, she's Here. Um, so since you're reading Homer first, you would, you would be familiar with that. And our last word is maybe the place you do want to go, if you're allowed. Uh, this starts with a diphthong with a capital. So the comma facing to the left means no H. So this would be Olympos. Olympos, which we remember as Olympus. And that ends with a sigma, one of the final sigmas. And so what have we done? We've done the letters of the alphabet. Um, we've looked at the capitals and the lowercase. We've pronounced them. We've seen them in words. We've looked at the diphthongs. We've looked at the breathing marks. And I've ignored the accents. That's something that can wait. So I think this is a good place to finish our first, our introduction to Homeric Greek. And... Uh, Thank you for staying with us and we'll see you again.